everybody, sir. We're running a few minutes late. It's been great to see everybody networking. Uh, welcome. This is our 55th Connectpreneur, so thank you for being part of it. Yeah, come on. And um, the reason we're able to do these events is because of our awesome partners, and they are listed in the program book, but I'll read them all out. We have the Golden Triangle BID, GW, several groups at GW, Demped, Tishman Spire, beautiful space. Thank you, Dan. Um, NFP, Next, powered by Shulman Rogers, Association for Enterprise Growth, New York Life, Blue Venture Investors, Entrepreneurs Organization, Startup Grind, Bitsy, Asian American Chamber of Commerce, Beyond, Ryan and Wetmore, Maryland Tech Council, National Association of Business Owners and Entrepreneurs, Kobe, the Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship at University of Maryland, Enterprise Transformation Solutions, Kairetsu Forum, the annual Wharton DC Summit, Georgetown Entrepreneurship, Institute for Excellence in Sales, the US International Development Center, Baltimore Angels and Founder Institute. Please, let's give it up for everybody. I also want to draw your attention to the last page in our program book, which has some QR codes. Um, most of you are probably interested in the RSVP listing, so you can just scan it and it'll pull up the, uh, the latest and greatest. We also have uh, a couple of events. We have an in-person event on October 17th in DC at the, at the City Club, so you can scan for more info, and also a virtual event on September 28th. Um, and we also want to shout out to our awesome prep team who did a great job with our 12 presenters today. So uh, without further ado, I want to, I do want to mention two other events. Asian American Chamber and Blue Ventures both have events coming up and they both have tables down there, so feel free to, um, to learn more. October 27th, the Asian American Chamber has an all-day business conference at KPMG in Tyson's Corner. And on October 19th in Bethesda, Blue Ventures, uh, the investment group, is having their annual cyber summit. That's something that you don't want to miss. So anyway, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you guys to Skylar Rallison, who's our community manager in from Laguna Beach. And you, many of you have talked to her and seen her, but now she's here in person. So thank you, Sky. Good morning, everyone. Um, to be honest, I spent the last day trying to think of some sort of joke to make to you all about how many emails I send, because I have had almost everyone come up to me and say, I've seen your emails, but I couldn't think of a joke. Therefore, I am sitting here just apologizing for all the emails and for spamming your inboxes. So take this as a form my formal apology to you. Um, so we have a great lineup of speakers today. Um, our first one is going to be Leona Agaritas, um, and she is with uh, the Golden Triangle, their executive director. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Leona. Alrighty, thank you, Skylar. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Triangle. Uh, as Skylar said, I am Leona Agaritas. I'm the president and CEO of the Golden Triangle Business Improvement District. And in case you're wondering, our neighborhood spans from the White House north to DuPont Circle and west to Washington Circle. So you are in the heart of the Golden Triangle today. Um, we're also home to the Penn West Equity and Innovation District. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about. Penn West is a collaboration between the Golden Triangle, the mayor's office, and George Washington University. And our goal is to build an inclusive innovation hub here by the White House to bring forward big ideas and groundbreaking technology. Penn West is an important part of Mayor Bowser's comeback plan for downtown DC. And I'm sure you've read about cities and the impacts of COVID and bouncing back. And so we've kind of, we're working with her, we're, taking a very aggressive stance towards growing that here. Um, so what, to, what we want to do today is to get your input on how we can grow that ecosystem. And um, we will have tables set up, or we do have tables set up, three throughout the room, so that you can come by later and share your ideas. 
Um, and then we're going to take these ideas forward to the policymakers as they build their budget for their next, next year and the years to come and their strategies for the long-term continued growth of the District of Columbia. Um, Elizabeth, who leads our Innovation District program, um, will come up a little bit later after some of the uh, pitches to tell you um, a little bit more about that exercise. Thank you. We look forward to your input, and I hope you have a great program here today. Thanks, Leona. Um, our next speaker is going to be Dan Dooley. He is actually um, our, our host of this building today, so we want to thank him for his hospitality, and feel free to check out the downstairs on your way out. It's beautiful, so without further ado, here's Dan. Thank you, Skylar. I, I also decided not to tell any jokes. Those, are, those can get you in a lot of trouble these days. But um, mainly, I just want a lot of you have been to the events here before, and I just wanted to welcome you back to International Square. But more importantly, announce to you that the square is now officially open. We are uh, opening up in a kind of a phased format. So we have about six operators going now, and we'll kind of roll a new one open about every other week. But uh, Casa Teresa will open in. Uh, the beginning of October, and we'll, at that point, we'll start operating the square seven days a week. Um, it's really a great chef-driven concept. Fifteen different operators will be down there. Uh, the two gentlemen running it came from Think Food Group, so this is really a really a high-powered group that's behind this that has really selectively gone out and found the right mix and the right type of uh, operators to really produce restaurant-quality food and kind of a fast, casual concept. So. I, I know Tian's going to finish at 11.59 so that you all can get down there and be ahead of the long lines that have been forming every day. But it's an exciting place, and if you work in the neighborhood, uh, come by and get a drink after work also, and there's still food available at that hour. And um, the last thing I'll say, and I saw some of our uh, customers from studio across the street. If you are looking for co-working space, please think of Fishman Spire and Studio. It's a great offering, and it's even better now that the square is open. So... Enjoy your day. Enjoy the square after. Thank you. Dan is a little bit taller than I am. Had to move that back down. Um, okay, our next speaker is um, Dean David Marshall. He is the Associate Dean, the College of Professional Studies um, at the George Washington University. So we'll welcome him up. Thank you. Good morning. Yes, I'm David Marshall, Associate Dean for Strategic Partnerships and Executive Education at George Washington University's College of Professional Studies. Welcome to GW's Backyard. Um, I am so excited to be here this morning and to share a little bit about our cyber programs in cybersecurity. For the individual with a desire to advance organizational security and advance their career, the GW Cybersecurity Program at the College of Professional Studies provides the opportunity to learn in-demand and agile skills from faculty currently working at the center of the profession, whether online or in the nation's capital. Our programs reflect the rigorous standards of the top governing bodies in the industry with a focus on strategic, operational, and tactical responses to cyber risks and defense. Our solutions-oriented projects reflect real-world dynamics and the critical challenges of today in an ever-evolving cyber domain. The GW CPS program prepares students for careers in this exciting profession. We offer a variety of degree and cer certificate offerings that meet students where they are. Bachelor completion programs, master's degrees, and boot camp certificates. Our programs are designed to meet the needs of working professionals and adult learners, especially career changers, changers mid-career workers, looking to advance their career. Online or in person, Saturday and evening classes, flexibility is a key part of our programs. Some of our degrees can be completed in 16 months. Finally, I believe this will, res this will resonate with many of you here, our programs offer competencies defined by NICE, the National Initiative for Cyber Security Education, and we are NSA and DHS, we are a NSA and DHS designated federal center for academic excellence in information assurance research. 
if any of you are hiring or looking for interns, we've got a great, uh, we've got some great students for you to consider. GW's College of Professional Studies seeks to partner with leaders in Washington, D.C. to nurture high growth sectors by attracting investment, supporting innovation clusters, and building the talent pipeline, not only in cybersecurity, but also in artificial intelligence, fintech, environmental sustainability, and others. We are building the education to workforce pathways through education, employment, and skills training that allow all DMV residents, particularly black and Latino residents, access to quality jobs. As a result, we are very, very proud to be involved with the Penn West Equity and Innovation District. Thank you to Connectpreneur uh, for the opportunity to speak with you all today. If you wish to learn more about our programs, please introduce yourself to me after the event or, or any of our GW colleagues here today. Best wishes and good luck to all of the teams participating in the company showcase Rocket Pitch event, especially the GW teams. Please enjoy today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Um, our final speaker is Suzanne White. She is the VP of the Washington, D.C. Economic Partnership. So I'll let her come up here and say a few words. Good morning. I am the last speaker, so I'll be fast. But I did want to introduce myself. You guys are all, um, it's wonderful to see you here. Um, and Washington, D.C. Economic Partnership works alongside the Deputy Mayor's Office for Planning and Economic Development to nurture this community, to nurture the tech community, bring them into D.C., see the value of D.C., and then those that are here help them grow and thrive. So we really appreciate you being here today. We appreciate you enjoying all that the city has to offer. Um, I thought I'd mention a couple data points that are, um, could be surprising to some of you. They, um, they usually are, but we're the num ranked number two city for women in tech, and we have three times the national average for concentration of tech talent. Uh, DC has the ecosystem that's just growing stronger and stronger. Um, and we also have, from the Deputy Mayor's uh, Office and the Washington, D.C. Economic Partnership, grant programs that are available to companies who are interested in coming into D.C., among them Vitality Fund. Um, and we're not just big game hunting. These are for small companies, too. So please reach out to either Deputy Mayor for Planning and Economic Development's Office or, for, or to me at the Washington, D.C. Economic Partnership. We'll be happy to walk you through um, any opportunities uh, in D.C. that there are. So thank you again, um, and enjoy the day. Thanks so much to Suzanne and all of our speakers today. Um, so now we're going to move on to our, our showcase of our 12 presenters. Um, I want to make a quick note for our presenters. Um, we had a little clicker snafu, so whenever you need to advance to the next slide, just feel free to glance at our wonderful AV team, and they will advance it for you. Um, so just, just no one worry about that, or is everything's OK. Um, Okay, introducing our 12 companies today are Anthony Millen and Mark Haas. Um, Anthony Millen will introduce the first six companies, so I'll allow him to come up here, introduce himself, and after that, I, the first, after the first six companies, then I'll come back up and introduce Mark Haas. So, um, Anthony Millen, why don't you come on up, wherever you are, there you are. Okay, thanks, Anthony. Great. Well, thank you, Tien and Skylar um, and the entire Connectpreneur team for today's event. We are very honored to be longtime sponsors and supporters of Connectpreneur, which plays such a critical role in our regional startup ecosystem, connecting both on a regional level and now through all of the work they do online globally as well, entrepreneurs, investors, and and um, other members of the ecosystem. As Skyler said, my name is Anthony Mellon. I am the founder and co-chair of Next, powered by Shulman Rogers, which is an innovative national award-winning legal practice for startup and emerging growth companies. And we work with startups on a regional, national, and global basis. Our mission is to empower startup success, and we do this through our innovative model for delivering legal services, which includes productized services at fixed price packages, high level of customer service, and a lot of integration of technology. And we support our startups from formation and early stage through financing all the way through exit. So for more information on Next, please take a look at us at www.next.law. 
So the first company that I have the honor of introducing today is Evstera Therapeutics. Evstera is an oncology-focused biopharmaceutical company developing three programs, which include a highly specific immunomodulator, macrophage-based cell therapy, and an mRNA-based cancer vaccine. Please welcome Karthik Musunuri, CEO and co-founder of Evstera. Hi, guys. My name is Karthik. I'm the CEO for Evstera Therapeutics. We're based in Malvern, Pennsylvania, but the reason I'm here today, thanks to Brian at GW, is because our lead compound was licensed from George Washington University, and we have a broad pipeline of small molecules, cell therapies, all with my personal goal to try and treat or cure cancer, specifically solid tumor cancers. In the solid tumor space, we have very promising immunotherapies, cell therapies, um, which are not so promising at the moment, but there's a significant unmet need. Around uh, two out of 10 of these patients may respond to existing therapies, and the remainder are left with virtually nothing, so especially advanced cancers. Our solution is a highly specific HDAC6 inhibitor, which acts as an immunomodulator in programming the tumor microenvironment to a more anti-tumoral state. Significant market opportunity, um, if you base it down, uh, over $60 billion market in metastatic solid tumors. And on a per indication basis, that could result in a compound like this that's orally bioavailable, resulting in around a billion dollars per indication. Our specific compound is very safe. It's not based on cytotoxic effect on cancer cells. The majority of companies focus on how toxic my, cell, my drug is towards cancer cells, but that also can result in toxicity against healthy cells, healthy tissue. The goal with our compound is to modulate these tumor-associated macrophages to a more anti-tumoral state. Up to 50% or more of solid tumor cell mass are these types of cells, so we have a very powerful potent effect in suppressing the polarization towards that state. This is a study we did in a melanoma mouse model you can see that we have monotherapy effect, but also in combination with existing anti-PD-1, we see a 100% response, a majority of these mice are cured. Same in a colorectal cancer model, uh, CT26, monotherapy, but also good combination effect. And this shows the proof and validation of our mechanism of action in suppressing the polarization towards M2s, which are tumor associated in nature. Uh, in the terms of stage of this uh, asset, we are advancing this to clinical trials in a phase 1AB at MD Anderson Cancer Center. And uh, we're very uh, proud and, and um, honored to be able to take this from literally a paper uh, at the uh, a lab at the bench and to clinic and treating patients. So really excited for this next stage. Uh, and this just shows a lot of our clinical strategy. Really, we're going to be looking at recruiting up to 43 patients. It'll be a phase one AB. So looking at safety, tolerability primarily, but also we'll be looking at different endpoints, uh, including efficacy, resist 1.1 criteria. Based upon if we can recruit four to five different tumor types in this study, then we'll advance and prioritize to phase two uh, trials for tumor types, which we feel will have the most impact. We do have one orphan drug designation as well issued from FDA. We also met with FDA and have good uh, meeting responses for the continued clinical development of this program. Uh, my team spans uh, large pharma. Um, uh, we have attorneys. We have top molecular biologists, tumor biologists. Um, and also we have very strong oncology team at some of the uh, country's top uh, institutions, including very thankful for the support at MD Anderson. Uh, we raised $5 million last year, and I just opened around uh, this last week. I already have $5 million in, so we're looking to raise uh, at least $20 million. And this is how we use it, primarily for supporting the first trial. And just uh, at the end of the day, we're trying to pursue any and all business development opportunities as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Karthik. I now have the privilege of introducing Hudia Health, which empowers hospitals 
and health plans to exert greater influence over community level factors that adversely affect their business. The company's digital health platform, Access Me Care, reduces the cost of care to individual healthcare provider, hospital, and payer. Please welcome Ed Connors, founder and CEO. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I am Ed Connors, CEO and co founder of Udia Health. Udia is a technology driven healthcare services company. We are revenue positive and raising capital. We are in a po strong position to improve the life and health and wellness of vulnerable individuals while providing a strong investment opportunity for investors. We are focused on the 80 million Medicaid beneficiaries that are twice as likely to use emergency room for primary care and create a $5.6 billion total addressable market for our business. They are they are, uh, this also drives to an 18 to $55 billion problem for hospitals and health plans. Our solution is to deploy a highly scalable technology platform called Access Me Care. It is to, to constructively disrupt the healthcare marketplace by providing increased collaboration between healthcare providers and community based organizations. This drives a top line benefit to clinics and a bottom line benefit to hospitals and health plans. Access Me Care is a virtual social worker delivered to the market under a B2B to C business model. So there is an incredible clinical and workforce shortage problem in the healthcare market space. We can use machine learning and data science to improve a hospital and health plan's impact on care with less human effort. Our target markets are clinics, hospitals, and health plans. We're currently focused on a $4,000 a month minimum cost for subscription to clinics and hospitals and are rapidly pursuing business with the Medicaid market uh, managed care organization. The underlying benefit of our platform, it is it's paired with an implementation process proven to increase the utilization of a clinic by 180% and reduce, a, a reduce write offs to a hospital. Uh, a typical benefit would be a hospital might expect to see a $1.5 billion savings due to elimination of bad patient debt. We've got traction with four clients across four states. We've served 42,000 people. An example is that in Dubuque, Iowa, 10.5% of the population that use Access Me Care used it to self-navigate to mental behavioral health care services in their community. The, uh, if I have a superpower, it's to attract key talent to the team. I'm joined by Marty Fisher, who is the former president of AOL Technologies, who's leading our technology initiative, and Celeste James, who comes out of Kaiser Permanente, with expertise in community health and population health. So we are operating at break even. Our gross margin is 75%, and we are raising capital. Our burn rate's $18,000 a month. We are looking to hire a sales and business development team, uh, scale sales, and exit. And uh, we're currently raising $3.6 million. We've got $500,000 committed or pledged. Half of the, a largest part of that is going to sales and marketing and to deliver uh, the next generation platform, which includes the AI components uh, to access me care. Please join us at the table. I enjoy meeting everybody, and thank you for having us today. Um. I would now like to introduce Immorta. Immorta is a place to share stories and hold them close forever. Part social media site, part preservation service, Immorta enables family members to upload and store their memories, and its mission is to make family memories immortal. Please welcome Sonia Schmidt, founder of Immorta. 6,887,000. I don't bring this number up, the number of people who've died of COVID since the beginning of the pandemic, to make us sad, so much as to remind us all of how important it is to store and preserve the memories of our loved ones while they're still here. The current landscape for storing and preserving these memories is somewhat limited. 
We can store them physically, but as we all know, with those ephemeral memories comes the fragility of time. The memories can fade, the photos can, can wrinkle, and the stories eventually can get lost. There's some digital platforms that try and help a space like Ancestry, but that's really more focused on remembering your family's immigration stories or, or finding connections genealogically. You can store it on a space like Dropbox, but that lacks the sort of user interface that really makes a space feel sentimental. And this is where Amorta comes in. Amorta, at its core, is a space to share stories and to hold them close forever. I describe it as part social media and part digital scrapbook. It's a space where you can store media in all of its forms, from photos to videos, your grandma's recipe for chocolate cake, and everything else you could think of. We really are trying to make it as user, uh, the user interface as interactive and useful as possible so that everybody finds a space to store their family memories. It's designed around a celestial theme with the idea that loved ones are stars in your sky. You can connect them into family groups called constellations. This idea is, is important to us because we think that your loved ones and your families aren't just your blood, it's also the people who are connected to you through, through other forms. You can connect these constellations together and form up your sky. The right hand side would show you an example of what your feed could look like, so it could show you featured stars from your sky, people in your community who you care about. You're not gonna be bombarded with the political content that you find on Facebook. You're not gonna be bombarded with the, the sponsored content. You're just gonna be shown your memories and reminded of why you care about the people you love. Our pricing strategy is a freemium model, so we wanna give everybody a taste of the kind of preservation they could have, so you'll have a little bit of storage for, for text and photos and, and, and um, only one template, so you can see if it works for you. And if you wanna have more customization available, we have a middle tier, and so you'll have more access for photo storage, you'll have more customization available in terms of the layout of the pages, so if you have more photos versus text, you can change it. Um, and if you don't want to do any of the work of digitization yourself, we can offer that as well. So we are, are willing to, for a, a fee of price per, per photo, digitize your photos, digitize your videos. If you have old VHS tapes stored in your, in your garage, we'll do that too. Anything that you might want to remember from your loved ones. And so the family memory or genealogy market is sort of the closest analog that we could find, and that is uh, rapidly growing, uh, anticipated growth from 3.5 billion today to 8.7 in 2030. And it's specifically that sort of family memory niche uh, that, that Amorta wants to fill. So in a space like, like StoryWorth is, if you're familiar with that platform. So a little bit about our financial plan. Um, our aim is to hit seven million in profit by fiscal year five. So we're looking for $100,000 in exchange for 10% equity in the business. Um, we're, we're really in the sort of depths of development right now. So we uh, actually are, um, as, as was mentioned, a uh, team from the GW New Venture Competition. We're so supported by the GW Innovation Department. And uh, we won the business to consumer track in April. And um, this summer, we've been really working on honing in our software specification requirements and are now in the sort of depths of development and, and wireframing. Our goal is to do beta testing in November with a hard launch uh, by the end of the year. So a tiny bit about me. My name is Sonia Schmidt. Like I said, I am a law student at GW right now, um, and I, I won the B2C track of the GW New Venture Competition. My business partner, his name is Devin Geib. He's a consultant at the Boston Consulting Group, and he's the mind behind the financial models. And um, so really, we're, we're here today because we care about preserving your family memories. You know, just like I care about telling stories as a law student, I care even more about telling them for the rest of us and preserving them for the years to come. Great, thank you, Sonia. All right, now we would like to introduce INSEER. A worker is injured every seven seconds, resulting in billions of dollars in workers' compensation costs lost productivity, and long-term health challenges. INSEER developed a proprietary AI computer vision system based in the cloud and accessible on all devices to prevent injuries proactively. Please welcome Shane Larson, CEO of INSEER. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for your time today. I'm Shane Larson, and I joined INSEER as the CEO from Berkshire Hathaway Energy's investment group. Uh, INSEER was created at the University of Iowa by several PhDs and MDs uh, focused on reducing musculoskeletal uh, injuries in the industrial workplace, so MSDs. Uh, MSDs in the U.S. occur about every seven seconds, costing about $20 billion annually and 
workers' compensation costs and lost productivity and long-term health challenges. Now, studies have verified that uh, more ergonomic assessments within an organization or facility result or yield uh, improved uh, safety as well as significantly reduced injury incident rates. However, current ergonomic assessment tools are very labor intensive. They take hours to complete a single assessment. And as a result, what we, you know, what we do is try not to hire more engineers to, uh, to throw out the problem, but we leverage technology and internal resources. We have a three-pillar strategy. First is the ergonomic assessment tools themselves, which are produced with AI in a fraction of time of the conventional methods. Second is data analytics so that we can focus on the highest priorities within the existing, within your organization. And third, a learning module which helps you educate your entire employee population. I'll focus on the first two today. With our assessment tool, you simply upload a video from any, dev any video device uh, through our system. We are calculating uh, 27,000 data points in a 30-second video. Again, we're converting all of your body movement to math. We produce uh, this nice little report, which is part of the report, uh, that shows a skeleton overlay, color-coded skeleton overlay, along with color-coded uh, joint scores, and a comparison module that allows you to validate changes that you might make before making costly changes within your organization. Now, as an aside, we actually have three versions of anonymous mode and a potential solution section. Again, we're providing lots and lots of statistics, and we do this in a matter of seconds, and we make this really easy to understand with color coding. Our data analytics uh, allows you to step back and look at the entire organization. 90% of the time of an ergonomist is spent uh, uh, reacting to incidents, responding to incidents. With our tool, we want to flip that on its head. And so again, the data analytics allows you to look at your entire organization, figure out where are the hot spots. Go to those parts of the organization first. Here in facility D, if we drill down, we'd actually find that there's five people that are attributing to this issue. We have two, uh, two customers with uh, uh, three-year contracts. Uh, Mid-American and Vermeer, uh, they're paying $65,000 annually. We just signed Pfizer two, uh, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, One-year pilot program for $60,000, plus they're going to reimburse us for our learning management content. We're in the process of evolving and developing partnerships with Cordy and Origami Risk, which will be integrating our APIs into their system. Uh, and, we, and we believe that one of those entities will likely want to acquire us uh, uh, some point in the future because they're backed by private equity. Longitude 6 uh, and other consulting firms like a a uh, ATI and Sandalwood uh, will be looking to uh, resell our product into the enterprise customers that they service. It, uh, this is a SaaS business model, 80% gross margins. Uh, and, and the real, but the real key here is converting our pilot pricing with Pfizer and others to real pricing, which is 390,000 in year two. We believe we'll hit a million dollars in sales uh, next year, and that's primarily a result of the integration of the APIs with Cording Origami Risk. Uh, our biggest competitor is Velocity EHS. Um, however, we're hearing from our customers that we have a very, the most accurate solution in the system, plus we have a hand module that'll be the first out there. We're seeking to raise 4.5 million in two tranches. The first tranche, which is now open, is a convertible note, $3.5 million. If you think about what I've soft circled and uh, 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 likely investors, I've got 650,000 available in that. Um, and the source of funds, uh, the use of funds is gonna be 2.5 million for growth capital and $2 million to reduce bank debt, which is fully uh, uh, funded by the existing investors. We've got a 10-person team, multiple uh, certified prof uh, ergonomists and PhDs to help ensure that our technology is right for the industry. Love to hear from each of you later today. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Shane. I would now like to introduce Liquid Technologies, a cutting-edge technology that revolutionizes cataract surgery with minimally invasive method, reducing costs and complication rates. Rapid patient recovery further elevates its appeal. Please welcome Justin Ross, CEO. Thank you. I'm here today because we've developed the next standard of care for cataract surgery. 
I'm sure all of you know cataracts are very common uh, and typically begin affecting people in their 40s and 50s. Uh, the current standard of care was developed in 1967 and adopted from the dental industry. Uh, the World Health Organization estimates that 90 million people around the world are affected by cataracts, but less than a third have them treated. Cost affects most people from having the ability to have access to cataract surgery, but when it comes to vision and how it affects our quality of life, a 6% complication rate is much too high for most to feel comfortable going into cataract surgery. Here's the good news. Laquette has modernized cataract surgery with our novel technology and patented uh, applications. So what we've done is, uh, instead of using mechanical ultrasound to emulsify the cataract within the eye, we've developed a novel, patented, less invasive technology to remove the cataract from a patient who is going to benefit from our device. With our device, we reduce the complication rate. In fact, we significantly, uh, we eliminate several types of complications associated with the current standard of care. But most importantly, we allow the, the patient to recover within a few hours instead of the typical three days that it takes for a patient to recover after the typical cataract surgery. Um, I like to point out that uh, I have the special privilege and opportunity of seeing both of my parents have their cataracts treated with our cataract technology. Uh, they had both eyes treated same day and they were both seen clearly before they left the facility. So the global market for cataract capital equipment in 2019 was 1.2 billion and that's expected to grow to 1.5 billion next year. 34% of that comes from the US but we plan to go around the world with our product with distribution that we've established in over 70 countries. <clears throat> when entering an existing market space against large entrenched competitors your products and services have to be much better and when it comes to cataract surgery when you look at the last 30 years, nothing has really changed. So compared to the competition, our cataract device reduces the complication rate, reduces the amount of time it takes for a patient to recover, it reduces cost, and significantly increases the practitioner's capacity through higher surgical turnover. So we're very excited about our traction with two strategics uh, significantly interested in acquisition at the point that we get close to FDA approval. We have CE regulatory approval in Europe for our beta system, uh, and the clinical study used to achieve that regulatory approval showed significant efficacy for our technology. And the, uh, the regulatory pathway for the FDA approval is clear for us because we've had two pre-submission meetings that show that F, uh, 510K is appropriate for our technology. We also have four patents granted in 10 countries, and again, we have distribution channels in over 70. So our team is well positioned for the upcoming sprint to market with over 160 years in industry, along with three exits. Uh, we expect to, uh, after two million in investment in our first tranche of our series A round, we expect to be profitable by the mid year three, and we expect to achieve 10% of the total addressable market by the end of year five. Medlogix invested six and a half million into our technology development and is the company that Laquette was spun off from in 2021 and as of January of this year, we're entirely independent of one another. We're seeking a total of 10 million in a series A round broken up in three tranches. And in the first tranche, we're seeking 2 million for straight equity of Laquette Technologies and Kiretsu is our lead investor for that round. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you at our booth. Appreciate it. Great, thank you, Justin. Now I would like to introduce novel micro devices. Currently, there are no rapid, accurate, and affordable point of care diagnostic tests. The Novel DX solution addresses this market challenge. Novel DX is a next generation, patent protected, rapid, affordable point of care PCR multiplex diagnostic platform for infectious disease and more. Please welcome Andrea Pace, CEO and co-founder of Novel Micro Devices. Thank you, Anthony. 
Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Pice, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Novel Micro Devices, and also the co-inventor of the Novel DX technology. I founded the company with the goal of democratizing disease diagnostics. As the US statistics show, there's a significant need for better diagnostic tests and better treatment, but the current tests on the market have trade-offs. The lab tests, on one hand, are very accurate, but they're slow. They take days for results. They require expensive infrastructure, skilled personnel, and equipment. The point-of-care antigen tests, they are fast and inexpensive, but they are not very accurate, so they require a second confirmatory lab test. And the point-of-care molecular tests are extremely expensive and don't meet the level of sensitivity of the lab tests. My team and I have invented and engineered the Novel DX solution, and here's why we're different. Novel DX provides lab level accuracy, PCR results, PCR testing, and it can be performed by anyone, anywhere. It's rapid, and it's very easy to use. You just load the sample into our disposable test-specific cartridge and run the test. Results are displayed in just 10 to 15 minutes. It's highly affordable and a true platform technology. It's, it can be used for any pathogen and any sample type, and it, it is extremely portable and scalable. Next slide. We have, we're patent protected. We filed multiple patents to cover each aspect of our key assay automation technology. And all of these patents have been company owned. And we're addressing a significant market opportunity, which is a 40 billion market opportunity. Our key customer segments include convenient care, such as urgent care facilities, retail clinics and pharmacies, primary care physici uh, physician offices, hospitals and emergency departments. We've raised $14.7 million to date and $2.5 million in founder investments and $7.7 .7 million in non-dilutive funding from extremely competitive grant funding sources such as NIH, Radex, and Carbex. With the funding to rate, we've achieved key company milestones such as filing our key patents, establishing our manufacturing capabilities right here in Baltimore, and demonstrating key performance for respiratory diseases, uh, COVID-19 and STDs on alpha prototypes. We're currently raising a $6 million equity raise in a Series A, and this, will, this raise will enable us to execute a controlled launch of our product as a lab-developed test. Um, the key milestones we'll achieve are system design lock, eg uh, uh, putting together our pilot manufacturing capabilities and verification and validation studies. We've also submitted grant applications for over $27.5 million, and that is to support our pipeline expansion into other infectious disease tests, as well as expanding our manufacturing capabilities. Our product pipeline and our launch timelines are shown here, and our first two tests to market are for respiratory diseases and sexually transmitted diseases in 2024. Our strategy is to always launch as a controlled launch as a lab-developed test or, as a, or, or an LDT, and this will enable us to generate revenue immediately as well as generate data that will support a 510K application. Next slide. And we have a, a highly experienced and motivated leadership team with decades of experience in engineering, product development, business, commercialization, and clinical fields. We have what it takes to bring this product to market. And finally, our company is an attractive acquisition target for a large diagnostics company looking to expand their product offering into point-of-care technologies. We're poised to generate very attractive exit valuations. And thank you all for your time and attention. Please find me at our booth, and I'm happy to answer any more questions. OK, to um, introduce our next six presenters, I am going to call up Mark Haas um, from AEG. He's our, the CEO, and he'll say a few little things, and then he'll introduce the next six. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Skylar, and thanks for Connectpreneur and TN and, and the whole team. Um, my company, AEG, is really an ecosystem of business advisors and CEOs and regional economic development people. Our focus is to make the local economies more resilient and, and more effective. 
If you've ever been in business and had a problem and you went to somebody and yep, that wasn't the solution, then you go to somebody else, nope, that wasn't it. What we're doing is addressing this issue by creating an ecosystem of business advisors in law, science, uh, you know, finance, uh, staffing, training, strategy, et cetera, who all know each other and work together to appreciate and understand particular problems. So we are in fundraise mode. Uh, we've raised about half a million dollars we're looking for. Uh, Tien, thanks to Tien, who's the chair and investor and uh, an incredibly persistent advisor. <laughs> So, um, Tian also said we're running behind, so make the introduction short, so we'll do that. And our next pre six presenters uh, can be summarized by, wow, it's about time we solve that problem. So, that's it. We're done. Um, so, our first, first uh, company is Osprey Bio. And when we uh, sequenced the human genome back in 2003, we thought, great, we now know what all the genes do. That's sort of part of the problem. But many of the diseases that we have are multi-gene diseases, and it's not so easy. So um, our next presenter, Osprey Bio, is going to tell us how they're developing the technology to diagnose and get the data necessary to understand multi-genomic genes. And Sam Glickstein. There you are. Thanks. So when we look at therapies today that, that are in the clinic, um, you see that the majority close to all, are single target or single gene therapies. Now the good news is that this does get us to cures for things like rare genetic diseases, but these have really small patient populations. So the not so great news in all this is that despite cell and gene therapy being the fastest growing in, uh, part of the industry, complex multi-gene diseases are not being worked on and simply cannot be addressed by single target, single gene therapies. An example, all too familiar. Billions of dollars in Alzheimer's research, decades have gone into it. Eight approved treatments, the best of which only delays symptoms barely at a really, really high cost. So where are the complex therapies? Why do we not have them at this point? And the answer is that there simply aren't any accessible multi-gene construction tools available for researchers to start building and testing multiple things at a time in the lab. And at Osprey Bio, we take that very seriously. So we've developed the clone card, and you'll actually see some at our table. This is the first accessible multi-gene construction tool available for the broad research market. These eight gene cards allow researchers to effectively swap genes in and out of a larger DNA vector, creating a multi-gene that allows you to test multiple things at once. I know it's really novel, but many things at once instead of one at a time. Faster R&D, cheaper R&D, but most importantly, this does not require expertise. Anybody can really do it in the lab. This really opens it up to the entire industry. Next slide. Uh, so again, an example with Alzheimer's. Here's just a potential toolbox. You got three different cards, 24 genes, thousands of new combinations to do multiple things at once, upregulate, downregulate genes simultaneously, new modes of delivery. I mean, you name it. This is the future of biotech. It's the only way the industry moves forward and cures complex diseases. Competitively, we do stand alone. We are in the biotool space. Everything we have is priced competitively. Each of our genes are um, very cheap comparatively. Uh, every gene also has that native multi-gene building system within it, so it's very easy to use, very easy to uh, cut and paste. Again, does not require expertise to build. We're going after the $5 billion gene and cell therapy discovery biotools market. All of our customers are in R&D, so whether it's academia, government, or the private sector. Uh, our revenues, we anticipate breaking even around year three with positive EBITDA, driven by different revenue streams, product sales, recurring sales, and licensing for commercial, uh, uh, licensing our genes for commercial use. And BioTools, this is, I just included this slide because it's really important to see that BioTools is actually a very dynamic portion of the industry. A lot of acquisitions, a lot of movement, a lot of IP sharing or licensing. And here are just some basic examples of big money going around in BioTools. This is not even the therapy space. This is what drives therapy development. We're asking for a $1 million seed round for convertible note mainly to expand our product line. It only costs us $6,000 to make a new card forever. Uh, and we can start tailoring those to different diseases. 
really to also, um, we're looking to execute an aggressive sales and marketing growth plan and also develop our partnerships that we have. Uh, notably, we have uh, catalytic data science, which is, I'm going to preemptively say the AI thing here, which is that you know AI is um, only as good as your data. There is no data available for multigenic therapies. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. We will be creating uh, probably the first database that will take advantage of that with Catalytic. Uh, management team, we have deep industry experience. Dr. Thomas Reed over here, my CSO. He uh, is the, the brains behind the Bird of Prey system. And we also have uh, our board members who are just BioTools uh, geniuses. They've, we all have great stats. We've done a lot of things in the industry. We know what we're doing. We know what the industry needs. Thank you very much. Looking forward to speaking with you all. Thanks, Sam. Uh, we all live in a world of a lot of data, but it's uh, data rich, information poor. So even with AI, whether Sam develops it or not, um, we're going to have a lot of difficulty pulling information together. Now, chat GPT, a lot of these generative AI technologies are great for single use operations. But what if you have a lot of unstructured data and a lot more information that you can handle if you need something that's more enterprise level? So our next company, Pixel Rain, is going to talk about how they've solved this problem or are solving a problem. So um, Chris Durham is the Chief Innovative Officer for Pixel Rain. Uh, good morning. Um, Chris Durham, Chief Innovation Officer at Pixel Rain. Today we're going to talk about knowledge management and an AI product we're developing that enables you to use the data and find it or find and use your data at the enterprise level. So what's happening right now, people are having difficulty finding the information they need to perform their job, right, in an easy and, uh, and without using much time. And even when the information can be located, the data has to be evaluated and actually acted upon. So our product looks at eliminating some of the hassles and actually speeding up this process. But first, uh, let's define knowledge management as we see it. So it's one, locating data based on a business need, and two, actually using that data to meet the business need, right? So our product is an enterprise AI solution for knowledge management. It allows users to interact with vectorized company data directly or through conversational agents, enabling employees to find and use their data with less difficulty. It's also flexible and scalable. We can deploy on-prem or in the cloud. Uh, the markets for AI are significant. So in the commercial sector, we're looking at Fortune 1000, and the public sector is an excellent market for our group as we have many existing relationships there. Uh, we've begun the first two phases of this flywheel. We're putting together three MVP groups or three companies to join our MVP program to test out the product. And uh, we're also working with a number of government agencies with one of our partners, Interimage, who has existing contracts that we can test our product on. So again, where are we today? We're in negotiation with uh, two of the three companies and, uh, that are going to be part of the MVP pilot. And we're talking to DISA and the Navy about implementing the product there. Uh, for product development, we're on what we call version 0 0.2. Uh, and we're working towards a version 1 by the end of the year. For, um, so what can we do today? We can actually deploy capabilities that enable customers to vectorize and search and use their data with greater ease. And we are continuing to uh, refine the product to basically build an optimized version of this that's easier to deploy and manage by the end of December. Our three-year revenue forecast is built up based on the uh, number of customers and number of product instances. Uh, the line here is showing a bootstrapped approach. We're prepared to bootstrap the product development and sales, but are anticipating lower revenue generation as a result. 
there's a lot of interest around AI right now. Uh, so, in, uh, you know, an influx of capital will let us hit larger market segments. So our team has been working together for years. Um, we transitioned from inner image to pixel rain. So this gives us uh, in-house expertise with years of experience, as well as uh, we get to benefit from many existing relationships. We have an initial investment from the company founders of 500,000, and um, we're, this actually builds upon 2.5 million that inner image uh, invested in R&D that was the basis for spinning off Pixel Rain. And we're looking for $5 million for an equity share to accelerate product development and spin off or uh, create a dedicated marketing and sales team. So thank you so much. Leslie and I are here today to do follow-on discussion and look forward to it. Thanks, Chris. If anybody's ever had blood drawn, you know that uh, some of you just want to like turn your head or close your eyes when you get that needle stick. Based on a lot of people's experience, I think you think the person putting the needle in is doing the same thing. So next company, Sonostick, is developed an ultrasound technology to guide the insertion of that, of that needle. And that's uh, going to be a, a real game changer for a lot of people who have a very difficult time getting their, uh, their veins found. So Gary Wakeford is the president and CEO of Sonostick. Well, good morning. Um, if you don't remember anything else from my presentation, just remember this. Sonostick helps the clinician get it right the first time. Think about that. Get it right the first time. If you remember that and only that, you know who we are and what we do. So we're focused on the IV catheter market. Most people don't understand this, but the IV catheter is the most commonly done medical procedure in the world, bar none. 380 million just here in the U.S., 15% of those fall into what's called a DIVA category. And I love that acronym, DIVA. Think of what that conjures up. In this situation, it's difficult intravenous access. Well, 15% of 350 million, actually that's, that's an old number there, there's over 50 million people we can help right out of the gate. Okay, so for each failed stick, for the patient, each additional attempt becomes more painful. It increases their anxiety and their fear. Failure to gain IV access means they have to escalate up to a much more expensive and much more potentially serious and dangerous procedure for them. For the hospital, each attempt costs more time and money. Poor patient experience absolutely translates to poor patient uh, satisfaction skills. Patients requiring three or more attempts, which is that DIVA category, even though it's only 15% of patients, it is absorbing 43% of the dollars associated with IV insertion. That's the market we're focused on. So we have a simple answer. If you look at our device up here, using this with portable ultrasound, which they will always use on DIVA patients, is you advance our catheter. Step one is you see the needle going into the vessel. Step two is this little thing right here, this track wheel. Once that needle's in, you simply advance that wire into the vessel with the same hand, not having to put anything down, then you easily thread the catheter over the needle. It's that simple. We have a simple technology that solves a very real problem. So we have had strong early success. We did license the technology from George Washington University, and our founder graduated from their medical school. Five patents issued. FDA a clearance on our original version of the technology. We have a special 510K in process because we've changed to a night and all wire. Very strong manufacturing partner in MedSource Labs out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. They will manufacture the product and they have a global footprint with contracts in place that they can add us to. That removes a significant barrier to entry. So one major competitor in the marketplace, the Bard AccuCath, the problem that they have, two fatal flaws, is one, they don't have this track wheel. Once they get the, into, the, into the, the needle into the vessel, they have to use a second hand to advance that wire. Well, to use that second hand, you have to put the ultrasound probe down so you've lost your visualization. And because that tab stips, sticks up through this tube, it is an open pathway for infection. And that is a major issue in the hospital levels. So 
We're starting with the peripheral IV catheter market because that's where we can do the most good right out of the gate. We are modifying this so that it is a true vascular access device that can be used for midlines, picks, central lines, and arterial lines. So it's a, it's a large, large product opportunity. This is just step one. So we are looking to do $18 million in sales in the first five years, which we believe will put us in a position to be acquired for 80 to $100 million. And these are very, very conservative numbers we're sharing with you. Very strong team. Hawa Amansori is our inventor and founder. I've done nothing but this my entire career. I've spent in the medical device world and have been involved with three successful exits. We have some world-renowned and world-recognized subject matter experts on our advisory team. And bottom line, we're looking to raise $750,000. I'm proud to say we have our lead investor in place, about half of that raised. So for your angel investors, if you have any interest in this, the train is getting ready to leave the station. Time to buy your ticket is now. We have a number of potential acquirers. These are just some, a number of potential strategic partners. And the comps just show this is a very active space in terms of acquisition in this market. These uh, acquisitions were all in the last three years. That's who we are and what we do. Love to talk to you if you're interested. Next presenter is uh, Travel Advances. Um, all of us travel. Most of us are on social media. But there's a big opportunity with that familiar platform of social media of connecting travelers together, uh, finding a way to finance those, uh, those trips, and uh, you know, sort of pull that whole thing together. So our next presenter is Derek Caffarata, who's the chair of Travel Advances. And here he is now. I'll tell you how it's going to work. Good morning. My name is Derek Caffarata. And today I'm going to talk about TravelAdvances.com. TravelAdvances.com is the first social media platform with travel which incorporates travel now, pay later. Housekeeping. All our financial statements comply with the safe harbor statement. Let's talk a bit about the opportunity. According to Forbes, there are over 4.9 billion social media users today. On average, each of these users has eight accounts, and they spend approximately 145 minutes per day on social media. Combine that with the fact that over 10 million travel hashtags are searched weekly, and the travel now pay or buy now pay later market is projected to grow to over three trillion dollars. The answer to that is TravelAdvances.com. TravelAdvances.com is the first travel and social media platform. It has four vertical lines of business. Tommy Talk, Travel Now, Pay Later, Travel 100, and Travel Mates. Tommy Talk. Tommy Talk is a groundbreaking social media platform, which includes Tommy your first AI travel companion. Travel Now Pay Later is there to help you, okay, position your upfront costs over time. Travel 100 allows you to go on those unique adventures with friends and fellow travelers. And, uh, sorry, uh, Travel uh, Mates, which I, that was the last point, and Travel 100, uh, previews the top 100 breathtaking destinations in the US. In concept test, TravelAdvances.com was viewed as best in class. Again, best in class against other social media platforms. Our roadmap, we will focus on millennials. They are 26% of the world's population. 60% travel alone, 58% travel with friends, and 40% will travel in the next 12 months. The global online travel market is currently $459 billion. It is set to grow to over $1.8 trillion by 2028. 
that represents a compound annual growth rate of 25%. Our revenue model is based upon four areas. Travel commissions, credit balances, membership fees, and advertising. We are looking to acquire 88 million friends by F28. Specifically, to acquire these, we will look at spending over $600 million in advertising. Our focus will be on celebrity and social media influencers, uh, marquee sports events, and digital media. Currently, our TikTok platform has over 4 million views. Our team has a blend of youth and experience. William and Daniel are attorneys and both have their MBAs. And Misa is a tech superstar. We will shortly be adding a world-class chief marketing officer and a travel expert. Our vision is to be the biggest online travel platform. We are tending to launch by Q4 of 24 and we're seeking a revenue or seeking a, an ask of $29.6 million for a runway of 18 months. We project an EBITDA of over $1 billion by F28, and that represents a 33 times return on your investment. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to speaking to you in the breakout room. Next presenting company is Railcard. And if you think of Papa John's better ingredients, better pizza, think how that applies to the matchmaking and, and online dating scene. It's one thing to just throw people together based on a simple match. Another thing to be able to curate them, develop those relationships, and make sure that they're really ready for the connections that they're about to make. Next presenter is Dr. Carlton Reeves of Wildcard. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Carlton Reeves. I'm the co-founder of Wildcard, an innovative AI-powered dating platform that allows, you to, that allows us to combine AI-based matchmaking with on-demand personal development content, plus personalized coaching and curated experiences, all aimed at fostering deeper connections and more authentic relationships. Better relationships start with a better you. At Wildcard, we believe that you should, you should invest in your personal growth, such that you can develop, you can be more honest with yourself, and you can develop more authentic connections with other people. Many individuals, when they look at uh, traditional dating apps, it's the endless swiping, those re, the, you know, the, re, the rejections you get, the endless states. This results in poor matching, as well as burnout and loneliness. At Wildcard, we look at how other apps are just gamifying the wrong attributes. Right? and which results in unhealthy relationships. We believe that you can revolutionize. We believe that you can revolutionize. I'm just going to hold this. That's, at, thank you. At Wildcard, we believe that you, we can revolutionize online dating by combining personal development with coaches and curated experiences. This allows us to focus on the emotional and mental well-being of yourself while you're going on dates, as well as provide all the additional support as you go through it. What we believe is that as Peloton helps you on your physical journey, we hope to help you on your relationship journey. At the core of Wildcard is our conversational AI matchmaker, an industry first. This uses our proprietary personality-based attribute system in order to develop really interesting and unique matches. This is backed by 40 years of research by Dr. Pepper Schwartz, a renowned sexologist, sociologist, and the hit personality on the hit TV show, Married at First Sight. With, at Wildcard, our AI matchmaking really focuses on identifying tailored matches by analyzing an in individual's qualities, their preferences, their interests, to really understand them and provide high compatible matches. When we look at, when we look at the competitive landscape at Wildcard, we believe that we're not focusing on that superficial aspect. Many dating apps focus on you know, swiping and basic filtering. They're not designed to grow with you. They're really focused on being disposable. At Wildcard, we focus on intentional dating, right? We're, again, focusing on how we can drive that through AI curation and our on-demand personal development content led by our relationship coaches. We're designed to grow with you 
from the fact when you start your dating experience all the way through your relationship and marriage and beyond. So as we look at as we look at, at Wildcard, as we look to grow, we as we look to grow, we've basically developed that there's two pieces to our platform. On one side, we have our relationship coaches, where coaches come on, they bring addition, they bring individuals to our platform. The other side of our platform is our individual users. To date, our coaches have in, have leveraged an influencer campaign, and if in the past 60 days, we've amassed over 800,000 followers, 56 and a half million views, and 7.3 intentional daters engaging our coaches. We're now bringing individuals on for a private pilot and we're building our wait list before we launch. Our, our product leverages a subscription business model where we have a free tier, our basic subscriptions, followed by various paid tiers as well as our in-app purchases. To date, my co-founder and I have invested over $100,000 into the business and we're seeking to raise another $500,000. This will allow us to continue on product maturation, accelerate customer adoption, and launch in two metropolitan areas, as well as, as, well as focus on how we're going to scale. Our key metrics as we grow to, and add additional cities, we believe that we'll be able to see rapid growth, customer adoption, and we'll be able to see uh, revenues grow proportionately. Our team is focused on helping you along your relationship journey. As I mentioned, we've got Dr. Pepper Schwartz, We've got Sabrina Zohar and Kylie and myself as a leadership team. We've taken companies public. We've also had companies acquired. We have the team to bring the product to market and our advisors who understand the dating industry intimately. Thank you. Thanks, Carlton. Uh, just, just thinking about, well, Wildcard has Mary and Travel Advances has Tommy. I wonder if those two could get together. Um, so our last presenter is Zero Thera. Um, this is more a medical device. It's a, yeah, David Joseph is going to tell you how uh, he's got a, a technology to deliver antibiotics in a very difficult situation in uh, orthopedic surgery. Thank you. I'm David Joseph. I'm president of Zero Thera Inc. Where am I shooting? Um, the um, problem today is uh, infections in surgical sites. Surgical site infections have a higher mortality rate than breast cancer, melanoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and many other cancers. The current standard today is a surgeon that has, um, um, right before closing, sprinkles in a dose of an antibiotic and crosses his fingers. And that's been shown to be woefully ineffective. Next slide. And it's created a huge burden on the healthcare system. More importantly, it's a huge burden on the, on the patient, uh, as you can see in this particular slide. Uh, and uh, its impact is not only on, on the hospital, on the patient, but on the national healthcare bill as well. Next slide. So we've developed uh, ZeroSyn, and that's being uh, a product that has a, um, a controlled release. It's a nano microstructure, think of it this way. It's a particle the size of baking flour, yet it's 80% porous. And as you load the antibiotic, it loads fairly quickly. It releases the antibiotic like vancomycin or genomycin over days, weeks, or even months. And that's really important. And the way this works is these particles are then mixed with sterile water and the antibiotic forms a paste and is put on tight at the surgical site before closing. That has enormous potential as a prophylax pro prophylaxis on every surgical case, including starting with all the orthopedic indications. Next slide. So uh, ZeroSyn is going forward with its first 510K as we speak. We expect to have that approved by the end of the year. That's the device side. Following that, we will provide the additional 510Ks for Xerosyn plus an antibiotic vancomycin for revision hip surgery to be followed by another 510K with genomycin for trauma. These are the, the most uh, of the types of, of surgical infections that occur in both of these trauma and revision surgery cases. Next slide, please. 
as I mentioned, those are the two that we talked about. Continue. Next slide. The, the growth curve is the, the, the release kinetics of our product, shown here on the left, is um, shows a, a continuous sustained release over three weeks. That's remarkable. There's one other product that just got approved in the market today by a Swedish company called Bone, uh, Bone Support. It's a cement product. Peaks out at about three or four days. It's a first generation product. Ours is really the next generation. I like to think of it, first one is a Blackberry and we're the iPhone. Next slide. You can see on this slide the growth curve is after first years of commercialization at a 20% um, um, penetration rate into a, into a $5 billion market opportunity in the U.S. alone. We see a growth curve of uh, 75 to $80 million at peak sales in five years. That translates easily to a 500 to $700 million uh, market valuation. Um, next slide. Uh, we're seeking, we've raised about $2.2 .2 million since inception, $1.4 million of that in convertible note financings and another $800,000 in a grant. We're doing a two-part raise right now. We're doing a $750,000 safe. I don't know if you're familiar with a safe. It's not unlike a convertible note, but it's a simple agreement for future equity. It has a, a $10 million market cap, and it has a 20% discount to the A round. We'll be doing the $5 million A round upon approval of our first 510K, which is uh, due by the end of this year. So around the first of the year, we'll do the A round. And that will convert uh, the, the safe at that particular point in time. We expect that to be a higher valuation. Finally, next slide. We're an experienced team. This is my sixth venture. Uh, two IPOs, one company sold to Johnson & Johnson, uh, another striker corporation. Founders, Dr. Paul Duchenne, is a, the renowned biomaterial science at the University of Pennsylvania and the core of our, we have an experienced team that goes over 150 years of life science experience. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you at the booth, and we can talk more. Cheers. All right. Um, okay, big thank you to all of our presenters. Um, really quick, before we finish up, I want to invite Elizabeth Packer up here. She's going to say a few words. Um, we have a really fun interactive activity um, to help networking, help Golden Triangle, so she'll come up here and say a few words about that. So here's Elizabeth. Thanks, Skylar. I'll make this brief because I'm sure everyone is eager to get networking. Um, some of you might have noticed some of the stations that we have set up around the room, but um, I'm here with the Golden Triangle bid, and you're in our business improvement district. And one of our initiatives is to build the Penn West Equity and Innovation District, which Leona mentioned during her opening remarks. So we've set up three stations around the room. There'll be a bid staff person at each of the stations. So to my left here, um, towards the rear of the room, and then the third one is by the men's restroom. At each of the uh, stations, we have an activity with a distinct prompt designed to help you get thinking about your vision and ideas for building and growing Penn West. So as members of the DC tech community, we would love to get your feedback and thoughts on the types of investments, interventions, programs, and partnerships that will be necessary to catalyze Penn West and help this area continue to grow. So please take a moment to stop by. The activities are brief. It should only take a minute or two of your time. Um, you'll also find at each of the tables, we have a QR code where you can join our Penn West mailing list. So please sign up. Um, as an incentive, we'll raffle off two gift cards for a free lunch here at the Square. So if you haven't checked out the food hall downstairs, you should, it's very delicious. We're really happy to have them here in Golden Triangle. So thanks so much for your time. Thanks in advance for um, participating and helping us build a successful Penn West. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, in conclusion, I just wanna remind everyone that all of our 12 presenters will have a table over there. So feel free to stop by um, if you have any questions or wanna talk to them. Um, don't forget to register for our two upcoming events. We have one virtual one on September 28th, as well as one in person on October 17th, which will be at the City Club of Washington. Um, and I know there's some 
QR codes over there that are hanging out and you can scan those to get your ticket. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to come talk to me. Once again, I'm Skylar Allison and Tian Wong is somewhere around here. Oh, here he is. So he's our CEO as well and he's the host today. So thank you everyone for being here and go enjoy some more networking.